Well, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is George Rodriguez with the Jungle Disc team. Um, I am the sales engineer, engineer sorry. and uh, today I wanted to talk about one of the new products that we are offering, um, which is Office 365 and email archiving. So the, the bulk of this webinar is going to be pretty much essentially the, the archiving piece. Um, but the first webinar we did was how the archiving was going to work with Google G Suite. And uh, this one is going to go over the archiving with Office 365. So if you attend the first webinar, it's going to be kind of the same stuff except for the, of course, the 365 portion. Uh, everyone here should be a, uh, a Jungle Disk customer already. If not, you know, Jungle Disk is a data backup company. Uh, we focus uh, a lot of our business on data recovery backups, and we work with small, medium businesses. Now, aside from the backups, one of the things that we envisioned uh, was to offer a suite of services to these small, medium businesses because one of the things that we noticed was a lot of uh, customers or potential customers were coming to us with uh, issues that they were already victims of ransomware or malware or cyber attacks and things of that nature. So we, we, we got together and we wanted to figure out what is it that we can do to help mitigate that. So we then launched our network threat protection service, which is, you know, uh, it's a device that will essentially sit behind your router, monitor all your incoming and outgoing traffic, we have more information on that on our website, or, or feel free to hit me up, george at jungledisc.com, if you do uh, want to learn more about that stuff. Um, then after the, the network threat protection, we then jumped into uh, the archiving solution, which is what I wanted to cover here today. Now, the archiving, it made sense for us uh, to, to be one of the services that we offer because we noticed that some of our customers um, we're backing up PST files, and a PST file or OLM file is, you know, of course, a backup of like Microsoft Outlook and things of that nature. And when we we engaged with our customers that were doing that, we found that it it's not ideal because it's not using some of the the warm technology, and I'll cover that later on in a bit. Uh, it's not using that warm technology to help. Uh, meet those legal requirements on the, which is the reasons that they're doing these PST backups. So we started offering this archiving solution, and uh, since we started offering that, it only made sense to offer an email solution along with it. So we do offer the Google G Suite and the Office 365 as well. So if you are using one of those products, you know you can definitely bring it on over. Easy. There's no downtime and things like that. So. Love to talk to you about that if, if you're interested. And again, my email address is george at jungledisc.com. Uh, there is a chat here. My colleague Beth is in the room with me. Uh, you know, so if, if you have access to chat, you know, we'll go ahead and put my information there. And feel free to ask any questions as well uh, if you want to shoot my email address later on or now. So yeah, so uh, to kind of kick it off and get started, I am going to uh, start off with a little presentation and then we will kind of jump into uh, uh, the, the actual archiving stuff. All right, so let me go ahead and set this up real quick. There we go. Oh, yeah. So, yes, the archiving solution, um, what, what we do with it is it. Right now, we have it to where it will work with uh, Office 365 and G Suite. Uh, so if you are using one of those, great. We can definitely help you out with it. Um, and it's, it's a real easy setup. So you'll see uh, after we talk about some of the reasons why archiving, um, then we can definitely show you the tool itself. So you can't see my screen yet, right? Let's try this one more time. Turn the screen. Where are you? There you are. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, open, open. There we go. All right. 
full screen, sharing that now. Okay. So, how's it look? looking good? Sweet. So you can see me and the screen. Awesome. All right. So, sorry about that. Uh, so here, you know, if you haven't heard of Jungle Disk, again, data company with over 25,000 businesses. And again, we tailor more to the small, medium businesses. Um, so to kind of get started, you know, what's an email? You know, these, these are some of the reasons why the people that need to have the solution in place and meet those requirements is because of all this. You know, there's things like contracts, uh, financials, secrets, you know, they got um, spreadsheets, designs, documents, trade business, all this stuff is what's in email, which is why a lot of our customers tend to back up those PST files and then they store that on our servers using the Jungle Disk software. So again, we didn't, we want, the reason for this is because we are noticing all this stuff in email and that it is important to our customers, we wanted to make sure that we had this something easily and streamlined to them versus having to do PST exports and then storing that, taking up storage on your computer and then having to wait to have that uploaded using Jungle Disk server. So, you know, again, that's, these are some of the reasons why we wanted to, to launch this service. So the difference between the backup and the archiving, uh, the backup is, as you can see here, is able to restore the original in the event of loss uh, or damage beyond repair. Uh, things of that nature, you know, catastrophic, uh, catastrophic uh, disasters and things like that. Uh, so again, it's to restore the original as it was uh, untouched. Now, archiving is kind of the same thing. It is the original emails and attachments. Now, the archiving, the way that ours works is once it's configured, it'll start uh, archiving all the incoming and outgoing messages within your domain or set of users, depending on how you want to set it up. But typically we recommend to have the entire domain if you are going to go that route because if you're needing this, it might be a good idea to, to have it for everybody. And it, it stores it away uh, on, on the servers using that warm technology, which is write once, read many. And um, you know this is all on the back end and it's done automatically. So this is huge for those customers that are doing those PST exports because again, they don't have to do all that work. This is stuff that's automatically happening uh, just by working. Uh, some of the reasons uh, uh, to do archive or email archiving, you can see here, this is uh, just some numbers that we were uh, able to gather. Uh, data preservation and governance, e-discovery, which is you know able to go back and look at emails, and I'll talk about that one because that's huge in our archiving solution. Compliance and regulatory, uh, regulated industries, data backups, and knowledge retention. So kind of jumping into that e-discovery one, our service, you know, I'll show it to you guys so you can see it. Um, it, it archives any incoming and outgoing message and it has this awesome search feature where you can search for, uh, as you can get as granular as you want. And, and again, I'll show you when we get into that tool. Now, the value of archiving, of course, is to protect your business, uh, meet compliance requirements. Uh, that is like a, uh, a must in some industries. So if this is in, in, in your ballpark, I definitely recommend you know, asking questions about this if you have any and uh, you know, implementing this within your organization. And again, that's where we want to help. And then cost savings. you know, so. When you're thinking about cost savings, uh, again, it is a per user license, fee, and then everything gets archived on the back end. But then, going if you're going back to the example of the customers that we saw using doing the PST exports, and then doing that backup, that's a bulk of data, and it's all in that file, you know. And you can have multiple of them. So if something were to happen where you need to go back and research these emails, or you, you you're not sure if, if, if something's there or, or you need to look for something. You know, you'd have to first restore that PST, then set it up on Outlook to where you can import, and that could take some time too, depending on the size of the PST, which can be gigs and gigs, uh, you know, d depending on how much data is in there. But with us, you know, it's as simple as going to this website, logging in, and I'm gonna show it to you, and then 
doing a search, you know, anything like my colleague Beth, you know, I can search for anything Beth at, and that's it. And then it'll get everything. Or like I said, you can get granular. And again, that helps with uh, having to spend so much time trying to look and dig through email. And another thing with this is uh, when you're doing that PST export, that doesn't mean that the files will be there. And that what I'm trying to say with that is if, if I were to receive an email and delete it right away and purge it from my system and then the you guys do the PST export, that message pretty much essentially never existed. So there's, there's that. And then the other thing is PSTs can be manipulated and they can be edited and things like that. So that's... That, that's not meeting those requirements as far as having those emails backed up, which a lot of people think is backing it up. But again, it's using that warm technology, the right ones. So our solution stores everything off on the cloud to where you can search for it. And if you need, you can do exports and things like that. So email archiving uh, complements uh, the Microsoft experience, again, because we're talking about Office 365 with our uh, uh, our our archiving solution here and rapid installation with no additional infrastructure or agent so there's no again there's no nothing you have to download on users computers or things like that uh, it's, it's it's a click of a couple of buttons actually you just need to get an address and you and it's a journaling journaling rule so if you're familiar with 365 you understand that that's pretty fairly easy and I'm going to show you that too um, so it helps enhance uh, Office 365 email management. Again, going over some of the stuff that we already talked about. There's, well, one of the things I didn't talk about is unlimited archive storage per user. So for that fee per user per month, you get uh, unlimited storage. So if you get gigs and gigs or hundreds of gigs of email, then all that's going to be archived, you know, and you don't have to worry about paying storage costs. Uh, associated with that so that's that's another thing we implemented there um, we uh, provide a compliance focused archive for all users again this is for everybody in the organization or you can limit it to just certain users again not many people do that but I have seen that before and and, and you get to preserve the email for as long as you want so you you can set the retention period but by default it's set to stay there forever but and again, you have unlimited storage, so you could definitely take advantage of that. But some people don't like to, and they'll have a retention period set to seven years. You don't need anything after that, which is fine. But again, if you have unlimited storage, why not take advantage of just keeping everything there, right? So the next thing is 65 does offer, uh, depending on the license that you get in this table here, there's an E3 license, and with that E3 license, it kind of has, it's kind of like our archiving, um, and, and that's come up a couple of times to our customers that have this implemented and in place. So th this is just a screenshot of some of the value that you would get of having, of not having that E3 license. And the reason I, I, we brought this up is because a lot of customers are paying more, which is at $20 per user on average, um, they're paying for that just for the ability to be able to search for emails. And I've seen that so many times. So what we can do is get another license, business premium or what have you, or, or even just the online solution. I'm not sure if the premium is the online solution, but uh, uh, you get all that plus the archiving and you're saving money. So the business premium with the archiving in this example is roughly $15.50. So you're saving about five bucks per user, and in those larger organizations that or nonprofits, this is huge, you know, because you definitely want to save money. And you can see here that, that there's a couple things that you don't get with the E3 that you do get with us, right? So things like the legal hold, um, we got the the e-discovery, the pre-discovery use cases, and then you can even give people access to that, which is not on this list, but you know, you can definitely uh, create certain users to have access to your archive, and then you can give them certain permissions, like to do certain things, like they can only do searches, or they only have access to do X, Y, and Z, you know. And again, we'll go over that and, and actually now. So um, any questions or anything like that in our chat? No? Okay, cool. All right, so 
this is the archiving solution. Okay, um, it is a, a URL that you would go to once it's implemented in your organization, of course. And the way the first thing I'll go over is how to set it up. So here under settings, once you're in the Jungle Disk email archiving, you're going to see collectors. And I have a whole guide on how to do this, and we can help you set this up. So if you are thinking about signing up, don't think you have to write this down. And then we're going to click Manage here, and then SMTP. So it's going to give us an address. And then that address, we would then come back to our Office 365 admin console. So if you're familiar with this, uh, you know, here on the left, you got all your different things that you can do. And Microsoft likes to make it a little bit difficult, so they give you a different admin console for everything. So I already opened up the Exchange admin console, which is right here. Once in there, we're going to go to Compliance Management and then Journal Rules. And then that's where you would just add it in here. You know, you click the, the Add button, add that email address for all incoming and outgoing messages, and you're set. Uh, so it's that simple. And again, once this is in, it, it might take about 10, 15 minutes to propagate or so, but then it'll start all archiving any incoming and outgoing messages. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. Now, back into this, uh, the, admin, or the archiving solution here, uh, you can see you have a couple things on the left-hand side, searches, export, holds, and users. I'm going to go over all those. Uh, so here under searches, I have some saves searches. So that's why you see here from Wes, another one, George. These are actual searches that were done. And it says the owner, who was the, the one that did this search? And when was it last modified? And how many uh, emails are in this search? Okay, so I, I won't go over this one right now, but let's say I'm going to do a new search. You just click on the plus sign here, and you can do certain keywords, or you can add criteria. You can search for all the email, and again, this is for anyone that you have this set up for. That's why we strongly recommend to have it set up for your whole domain. Uh, so you can do it from any or to, you know, so let's say I'm going to do anything to george at jungledisc.com. I'll take away keyword because I don't want anything from there. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that and hit search. Again, this is our basic search. You can then see here that the, uh, the search produced 98 emails in the span of 1.2 seconds or so. So it went and it searched everything that's in that archive, which is, this, this is awesome. Uh, and then you can even open up the emails if you want. Uh, you can see who it was from. Because again, I searched for anything that was to me from, and then it shows me who it was from, the date it was sent. Uh, I have holds here, uh, which I'll go over right now in a second. And then you also have open to where you can even read the email and review the attachments that are even in there. Uh, so this is this is big, right? All right. So let me go back to the search. Now, if you have any questions, again, feel free to type up on the chat here, uh, and we'll answer those right away. Um, so the other thing with with this is uh, this is where you can save the search, right? So this this is going with the uh, searches that you just saw before here, and then. These holds, you can simply just let's see. It's not going to let me hold some of these, but the holds are in the event you do have that retention period set up. Okay, so a good example of that is when, when like an accountant, like one of our, our customers that's an accountant, he has a, a retention period set up for seven years. Uh, once seven years hits, Anything that's in this archive is going to get purged. So let's say we're coming up on the right about like a week before the seven year mark, and there's messages from seven years ago that he needs to save. He can put them on hold where you'll see this little lock, and then it'll save it. So even after that seven years, these messages are going to stay there because there's this hold on it. And once, once you when you lift that hold, if it meets that seven-year rent, then they get purged. So you can you can leave it there as long as you want, or you know, again, just stay with the the default of having everything uh, in in your archive for an unlimited amount of time. 
All right, so I won't save this search since I do have searches already. And then, and the reason for the search, save search is you know, when there's when there's things that you're looking into and that you want to check and things like that, you can save certain things. Like if, if I wanted to see anything that was to George, that's why I have this saved search here. So that every day that I needed to come in, I could just hit run and it'll run based off the requirements of what I set. Um, so that way, it's, it's a little bit easier instead of having to create a new search every single time I want to run it. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, you do have the option to do an export. When you do the export, you know you need to select the messages that you want, then click on export. And then it's going to show up here on the left under exports once it's ready. And I say that because it, it does take some time depending on how many messages there are. If you have thousands and thousands of messages, it's going to take a while for that to be exported from, from the servers into this, and then you would just download the PST file. That's, that's the format it would be in, if you're on Windows. Uh, or if you want, you can, uh, you can do a PDF, or you can do an EML file. So it automatically checks EML because I'm currently on a Mac. If I was on a PC, it would default automatically to a PST, so on and so forth. Um, now the other thing I was going to go over real quick is here under new, you have, again, we kind of went over this real quick, but that's again the basic simple search. You do have an advanced search as well. And this is where you can get super picky on what you're looking for. So I can look for certain keywords that is, you know, in the subject or if it's in the attachment uh, or if it's in the body of the message or, or in the body of the attachment. You know, let's say I'm looking for something that's confidential, right? And let me expand this a little bit. I'll hit apply. And then I can add more stuff to this. So I'm going to add criteria. If it was to George at Jump Disk. And then apply that. So if you can see here, it's going to look only for things that are in the subject, the body attachment, things like that, that says confidential and was sent to me. So if Beth had, in this situation, if Beth had gotten an email that said confidential, that's not going to show up on this list. And again, this is just so that you can get as granular as you're if there's something specific looking for. And then again, once you do the search, you can save that and it'll show up under your save searches and, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, here on the exports, I don't have any, but again, all you would do is under the, the searches, you'd hit that export option, and then it would show up here to where you can then download it. So let me, let me see if I can actually do that so you can see what it looks like. Oops. Select all those. Export, email, all right. All right. So here under exports, when I click on it, you can see that it's still processing because it's gathering all that information. So it is going to take a little bit of time. So I'll come back on that one and look, so we can see what it looks like. Holds, these are the different reasons why you can do holds. Uh, litigation, compliance, violation, data loss. These are the only five that we have currently right now. They're not able to be edited, but again, you, know, you can use these in place for now and then Hopefully, we'll have some stuff in the, uh, in the future to where you can edit it and give it your own reason on why you're holding it. And you know, so if you have several different searches that have holds for active litigation, you know, then you can click on that and it'll show you all the messages that are being held for active litigation. And then users here on the left is just a list of everybody that has access to this. You know, you can have end user, which is the EU. Now, what that means is, like for instance, Beth here. She is uh, R, which is a reviewer, and also an end user. So if she wanted to, she can go to the, to the website, and she would be able to see all her archived messages, right? And, and that's good, so that that way, if, if something happened, instead of her having to come to me saying, hey, I didn't get this message, can you check to see if it was even sent to me at all? Maybe I accidentally deleted it. Instead of me having to worry about that, and especially in a large organization, that can be very time consuming if a lot of people are coming up to you like that. So I'm giving her the ability to search her own archive. She can't delete anything. She can't edit anything, which is good. Uh, 
but she has the ability to view the archive to see if she even got that message, you know, and then she can restore it to her mailbox and things like that. But this is good because another uh, example uh, that that this was used for was, uh, you know, some some somebody was in uh, a situation where there was litigation that needed to be they needed some other outside users look at their archive, right? So what they did was they created a user that had access to just review the searches so that that way they can log in with their own credentials, look at the searches that I did, that I set up, and that's it, you know, so that that way I don't have to worry about doing the search, exporting it, downloading the stuff, and then sending it their way. And then that's another thing to consider because if it's a big file, you know, that doesn't transmit well over email and, you know, using Google Drive or in this case Microsoft OneDrive, you know, uploading that stuff and then sharing it could take time. So, again, this just makes it a little bit easier and it streamlines that to, to help with those, uh, those times that you do need it, right? So let's go back to the exports real quick and it's complete. So that's what the export looks like. Uh, I would just tells me how big that file is. I can download it, and then again, this is an EML file, so I'd want to open it with, you know, one of my programs here uh, on my Mac. Um, so again, that's how easy it is to set it up. And again, these are just a lot of the features within here uh, in the, the the archive as well. And there's another cool feature uh, which you can see here, which is called Insights. Now this is my test account, so there's not much in here, uh, but this is really cool stuff, especially when you have this turned on for everybody in your domain. This gives you an awesome overview of the things that are going on in your domain, and it's just awesome to see all this stuff. So right now I have it set to, let me switch to 90 days just so we can see some data. So you can see here on my dashboard, in the past 90 days, again, this is just a test account. There was over 2,000 uh, messages sent on three different mailboxes, 583 attachments in those emails, and then, you know, of course, the data that's, that it's, uh, it's using. Um, again, this is the dashboard, so this is the overview. You can see broad stuff, threats, and what this does is it kind of just gives you a warning that, hey, there's some of these emails that might be contributing to fraud or might be a threat to your company. And you can see more of that here. So like when I hit fraud, you can see here that it'll show me how many emails have like a W2 request or wire transfer requests. And then the same thing with threats. Threats, you can see anything that has like macros, programs, URL shortcuts, you know, anything that seems kind of suspicious, right? So this is, or, or next one, data loss. This is another one. Uh, you know, downloads, invites, things like that. You know, it, it just helps you get access to everything that's going on in your domain. Sensitive info. You can see here, you know, how many emails uh, have bank account numbers or driver's licenses. Now, looking at this, I don't want you to think that in my test account I'm sending bank account numbers back and forth or driver's license numbers. What this is, actually, uh, the system was learning uh, you, you know, our accounts and the way we communicate and stuff. So those bank account numbers, you know, it, it freaked us out. So, of course, we went in and looked because we would want to stop that. We are hoping that no one's sharing bank account numbers over email, right? And sure enough, they were just ticket numbers. So that's all it was uh, on our end. Uh, nothing to worry about. It was just ticket numbers. So we were kind of relieved to see that. We know that because data security is, of course, our, our number one priority. Um, and then the other stuff, you know, <laughs> system abandoned boxes, volume, things that are going on, you know, who has emails, most emails, things like that. Uh, and then you can even get uh, reports on stuff. So you can get reports on specific verbiage, like if, if, if there's cuss words being used, you can get, get a profanity report, you know, things of that nature. Uh, the fraud alerts, you can get those emailed to you. I get those every day at the same time, which is about maybe 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, I get those reports that says, hey, you had X amount of emails that had, you know, a fraud in it. 
And if there's anything in there, I can then click on it and review the data, make sure that it isn't something. If it is something concerning, then I can address the issue right away uh, with that individual. But again, this is just really cool. Not a lot of people do this stuff out there that offer a similar service to this. So again, uh, it is, this is huge. So just to recap, because I'm pretty much done, if, unless we have any questions. There's no questions yet? Cool. Well, I mean, I hope that this is helping. <laughs> and, and feel free to, to type up any questions if you have any. But again, uh, the reasons we're doing this is because uh, it, it helps with customers that are trying to store PSTs and things like that, uh, you know, that need this as part of a requirement uh, in their organization. Uh, super easy setup. Uh, it's simply getting the link from this website putting that into your Google or uh, your Office 365 account as a journaling address uh, and then playing with it, you know, letting it, letting it go and do its thing and do your searches if you need to. Hopefully you don't have to have any litigation uh, reasons to save uh, searches and things like that, but you never know, right? Again, that's why we have this in place. Um, so yeah, so if there's, I'll, I'll wait a couple minutes just to see if a question comes up. Or, or, or anything like that. So feel free to to let me know. And I'm going to look for my click view. There we go. Let me stop sharing my screen real quick. All right. That's sharing. There we go. Awesome. So yeah, so I see that Beth does have my email address, george at generaldisc.com. Um, feel free to reach out. You can also send an email to sales at donaldisc.com. Uh, get in touch with one of our, our sales individuals. Uh, or feel free to give us a call. You know, uh, We do have a set of guides on how to do this. I have YouTube tutorial videos on how to do everything that we just covered. Um, and then again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. We, we'd love to help. Okay. And I see Beth has that information there, so don't see any any questions. So again, we'll go ahead and cut it short. I know I had this scheduled for about an hour or 45 minutes or so, but uh, you know, feel free to to reach out to us if anything does come up. Okay. Again, visit jungledisc.com just to look for any better ways to help uh, protect your business. Okay. Thanks for your time, and I hope you all have a great day.